carry on with what I was going to going to talk about which is um, a story I saw in The Guardian it's it's available lots of other places and it's about streaming streaming music is is um, in equivalent albums which what's that a thousand streamed tracks deemed to be equivalent to one real world album anyway you look at this and um, the the streaming income is 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 amazing now and apparently it's all very viable and it's it's pretty much different to where things were say 10 years ago when i, th I think phonics started sort of 10 years ago that was last year but i think probably well i'll check with chris but i think the wild show is about 10 years old will be sometime soon and during that time quite clearly the um the cd situation has more or less gone away and the streaming situation has, has, has taken over and radio must be affected by this in some some sort of way which we'll come back to and also i think education or uh, content distribution in the form of academic journals or knowledge uh, various various things like that which we'll come on to later and i think really that my, my solution to how to describe that usually has been to to ask the storyteller uh, because he's also the stand-up philosopher and you can just sort of explain a situation in which something needs to be said and more or less what the issues are and he will come up with a, a dramatic version of it usually anyway um, one of the things which got to adjust to all this streaming business is the record store and in Exeter we've, we've got one shop in on 4th Street, which has more or less always been mostly vinyl, which is what the chart shows as growing, um, and then HMV, which has, has got a stock of current CDs, uh, but also it seems to be putting more and more space to vinyl as well. And they've started to do live performance. So um, Black Monsoon was there which I recorded the, that was and when I, when I was there uh, they said that the Simitons are going to be there possibly in January uh, so that is interesting I think what's happening is that, that they need to be more kind of um, analog or authentic or some sort of offer something that streaming doesn't offer um, so I notice a lot a lot of the a lot of the vinyl seems to be classic tracks from long ago I'm not quite sure what that's about um, but I'm, I'm going to try and pay more attention to HMV because uh, well partly I'm, I'm an old-fashioned CD uh, person anyway um, and it's just interesting how that how that's getting along when we started the show uh, well at least five years ago um, the studio wasn't wasn't really set up for streaming devices it was more a CD sort of studio, but now I think there's about three. There's two cables and a Bluetooth option. That's apart from the computer that has some um, quite good bandwidth. I say that I'm about to test it. Should be all right. I think it's. I think it's all going to work. Um, uh, Dion Warwick and the CD she's back is still in HMV. I think there's only one copy. It's been there a long time. The price this year is still the same as last year, but there is uh, another CD hidden away in there uh, called Now, which is reworkings of classic tracks. And the the She's Back has got some some old tracks as well, but a lot of new new tracks. And uh, that's just an example of what what seems to go on with with um, the C the compact disc. Some of them are, are now quite cheap, quite reasonable, and then there's a there's a few which the the price is there for dedicated fans or something, which I think is a mistake because I I think if it was all reasonably priced, like the the Christmas one, the Dion Warwick Christmas one was was okay sort of price, and uh, that seemed that seemed to go. Um, so I think I think I don't. And what am I saying? Go and go and have a look anyway. If you can find the one. The one copy of She's Back and Now, coupled together at an expensive price for one. I'm, I'm going to go on like this. Um, H HMV is, 
arguably an endangered uh, sort of uh, phenomenon. And I think it contributes something, even in the age of streaming, that uh, we seem to be in. Uh, anyway, now I'm going to play an advert for a MOOC course. Uh, when when JD is back, which I think will be next week, um, we talk about the MOOC. And I'm going to go to Lancaster for um, a conference in March about uh, the Platform University. I think they're going to be quite negative or critical at least about the Platform University because the online uh, streaming world is regarded as commercial. It's not really coming from a, an academic base. Um, but why, why that is, is another question, I think. But that's how, that's how it all seems to be looked at. Um, but that's at the, the Story Institute, which is in the, in the town of Lancaster. It's in the, in the city centre sort of area. So it's a sort of equivalent of the Phoenix, which, which this is. Uh, well, um, Philphonic FM is in the basement of the Phoenix in Exeter. And round the corner from... Uh, the Story Institute in Lancaster is is the castle, which is a much more substantial castle than than we have in in Exeter at this time. Uh, it's still got very strong walls, and uh, it, it was a prison. It's it's no longer a prison, I don't think. I think it's more a, a visitor place. Um, but I'm I'm interested in the idea of a fortress university as well. Peter Horrocks, who was vice chancellor of the Open University. Um, he, he more or less had to resign, I think, because he was putting far too much money into FutureLearn and closing down buildings, re regional support centres, which is all quite arguable, but I, I think that possibly was a, was a case for shifting priorities away from buildings. When, when JD's back, and may, maybe with Chris to some, some extent, we'll, we'll go on a bit about student accommodation and why there's so much of it still being built in Exeter especially, well, maybe everywhere, I don't know. There's a lot in Lancaster as well. Um, but it j just does seem odd that if the online world is, is reaching an education, which it might be, um, why the building is still going on when Exeter can support maybe two record shops? Not more than that, doesn't seem. And maybe not that many. We don't know how that's going to go. Anyway, all I'm all I'm going all I'm suggesting is we look at um, we look at the music scene and the the university scene or the education scene as if there's some sort of connection. What the what the dates are on any of this we don't we don't know, but we didn't know during the last ten years looking at the music scene and um, the stats on streaming seem now. Anyway, that we've been, been into all this. This is this is um, on. You can find this on YouTube. Lancaster Castle and Northern English History: The View from the Stronghold. It's a, it's an advert, but I think it's worth worth considering. This is Lancaster Castle one of the most impressive strongholds of Northern England. From Roman times until the present day, this site has dominated Northwest England and played a key role in political and social history. In this course, we use the castle as a way into the history of Northern England. We look at famous incidents in the area's past, as well as hidden histories, all the time accompanied by the castle's exceptional buildings. We'll be exploring turbulent times from a medieval Scottish raid to the Second World War. We'll encounter famous monarchs, including Henry IV of England, Robert the Bruce of Scotland, and Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. We'll hear about figures prominent in social and cultural history, such as the prison reformer John Howard and the author Charles Dickens. We'll learn about the people who were incarcerated here, such as the notorious, yet wretched, Lancashire witches and German prisoners of war during the First World War. I begin the story before the castle, with the Roman forts on this site, and I trace the castle's role through the turbulent medieval period. I will then be joined 
by colleagues from the Department of History at Lancaster University. Dr Stephen Pumphrey will tackle Lancashire after the Reformation, a time when witchcraft accusations emerged against a backdrop of religious tension. Dr Chris Donaldson will explore Lancaster Castle's appeal to 18th and 19th century visitors and the changes in attitudes to life inside the prison. Dr Corinna Peniston Bird will trace the history of the castle from the First World War to the very present, ending with the transformation of the site from a prison to a heritage destination. Along the way, we'll be joined by other experts in the castle's history. Join us for a fascinating journey through two millennia of Northern England's history, viewed from the stronghold of Lancaster Castle. Maybe we could do, do something similar on, on Exeter, Exeter Castle, which is now for weddings and uh, conferences and residential, uh, but has, has got history. So uh, maybe we could fit, fit something in with that. But what I'd like to do is think about the Fortress University because um, Lancaster Castle's also been used for uh, conferences, lectures, uh, about the, the history of uh, free speech, the witch trials, uh, the Quakers, all kinds of I I events there. And I, I have now found the video I, I was thinking of. It's called Beyond the Lancashire Witches, Writing and Freedom. Uh, it's uploaded to YouTube by Lancaster University in 2014. And uh, I, I don't know why they don't use the castle more often as a venue for, for video. Uh, it, it really makes very good use of the lo location. Well, well worth a look. Uh, Beyond the Lancashire Witches, writing and freedom. So, if you if you sort of go back to what Peter Horrocks was going on about, the idea of the Fortress University is something that can be uh, freed up a bit by moving it online, make it more open. Um, I think maybe you can imagine. A fortress university at some point in the future and I've, I've been thinking about that uh, when visiting Kendall uh, because Kendall has got a castle that's definitely a ruin maybe we've got ruined castles in the southwest somewhere could do it um, this, this is where I want to talk to the storyteller uh, when I eventually locate him uh, I'm sure he's last year one of, the, one of these times I came in early to, to cover he actually turned up this was in the summer when the festivals are going on. I'm not quite sure where he is. Uh, but anyway, uh, the Fortress University, the Platform University, and what happens at some point in the future, uh, as, as fiction, obviously, it's a sort of science fiction, uh, but using castles, ruined castles, as, as a backdrop. Uh, if anybody's got any ideas, to get to to, to to get in touch on will seven eight nine GB on Twitter or the wild show which is going to start quite soon uh, has got a, a Facebook page or w e n o t n o the the we don't know show which is often on a Wednesday more or less every other Wednesday um, that that's on Twitter as well 